the origins of the liberal nationalist divide and moderate extremist divide mm-hmm. isn't a, a feature of independent Bharat. It is actually a feature of colonial Bharat. It is the legacy of colonial Bharat significantly. And to a significant extent, the difference in attitudes, the approach to the West, the attitudes towards the West, the veneration for the West in certain circles, these are elements which are very, very common to current day liberals and the liberals of yore who were known as moderates. Now, for a moment, let's keep the semantics aside because a word is capable of multiple interpretations depending on the context. Let me just uh, place my position on facts and conduct. The fact remains that from the time of its founding in 1885, right until the upsurge of the extremists or the nationalists in the early 1900s, the Congress saw itself as a non-seditious pro-British organization and they would go to huge lengths to prove their loyal character to ensure that it is never called into question by the British. Hmm. Now, of course, we could say it was for reasons of pragmatism because nobody wanted to go to jail. And the fact of the matter is they actively impeded the views of the nationalists. They would actually stifle it on a regular basis. They would find reasons and excuses alongside the British to actually kick them out of the party, which is what ultimately happened in 1907 in the Surat split. Let me also make perhaps uh, this this point that the Congress's founding itself has a serious colonial hand and A.O. Hume's contribution to the founding of the Congress was not benign or noble whatsoever. So reports which I have cited in the book clearly say that there were seven volumes of intelligence reports that A.O. Hume had received right from 1870s onwards because you know that there was the famous Bengal famine of 1877 so on and so forth. This had created so much of anger against the British establishment and the taxation of salt and everything else put together that underground activity had started and weapons were being collected across the country. So A.O. Hume realized that the colonial establishment was sitting on a powder keg And it was looking at a situation which was as bad or worser than the 1857 rebellion. And so he realizes that it is imperative for them to set up uh, what they called a safety valve. So it's called the safety valve theory, which would allow educated Bharatiyas or Indians to ventilate their point of view so that that anger could be contained. And the idea was that the British establishment would engage with them so that they feel that they are part of the administrative infrastructure and they are stakeholders to it. And using these people as props, they would achieve two things. One, they would know what was happening in the minds of the most vocal group of people who spoke the same language as the British. And two, using them as conduits to ensure that the rest of the population fell in line. What is even worse is if you look at the first call that was given for participation, for the International Congress, which was not an organization then, it was just a platform or a conference of sorts. The requirements were only English speaking people were permitted. And this was a call that was given, including by the Indian leaders who were Indian by birth. I would assume that had this been only uh, an isolated instance in 1885, there's no point in making a big deal out of it. But this attitude continues until 1920s. And they saw the nationalists and the revolutionaries as irritants who had to be got out of the way. But had it not been for the extremists or the revolutionaries, the moderates would have never been pushed into taking certain positions which required them to rub the British on the wrong side. So I would significantly say that the story of Bharat's independence is the story of the extremists and the revolutionaries pushing the moderates further and further in the direction of independence. And but for them, we would have remained a colony of the British just as New Zealand, Canada and Australia.